Hi there, I'm Sarami, and today I have the rare uploaded garment from start to finish. I'll even take my PDF with you. So I'm going to be doing the Reynolds Top and Dress by Helen's Closet, Helen's Closet Patterns. And I'm going to be doing view A, the top, which is this one right here on the left. I'll probably lengthen it a little bit. I'm gonna be using this polka dot lightweight fabric. Um, I think if you're using something a little bit heavier and maybe you're, you just have that like yard of fabric and um, or a little over a yard, depending on what size you're looking for, and you just really want to make a top out of it, you might be able to do it on the bias depending on how much fabric you have, um, if it's a little bit too heavy you think to be the top. So I would definitely play around with doing a bias version of this because I think that it would look really cool. Um, this is pretty lightweight, doesn't really need that kind of effect. Um, it's gonna be drapey enough. So, and kind of floaty, I think, too. So the first thing I did was I used Helen's Closet's worksheet for calculating my bust size. The bra I wear is a D cup, so I thought maybe I would need the D cup pattern, but then I looked at the measurements and I was like, you know, I don't really fit in there. So I looked at the chart here and measured my full bust, my high bust, um, subtracted one from the other, found out that I'm on the B cup list here. So I've printed out the B cup PDF version of the pattern for the top pieces. And the first thing I like to do, besides make sure that it printed accurately using the two by two um, or a centimeter square here, is I cut off the corners of the pattern. And I find this makes it pretty fast to tape it together. So I just cut these corners off right to the bounding box that frames each page. And I just kind of nip them off. I, you don't, it doesn't matter how big, you know, how big you do it, how small you do it, just make sure you get to up to that little corner right there. And then all you have to throw away is this. You're not really taping or trimming these big pieces unless you want to. So it's just not necessary. Once you've sewn uh, more and more, you're going to find that you really don't need to do that unless it's something where you're missing some of the markings because the border covers it up. All right, so I'm going to stack these back. And then when I go to tape it, it makes it very easy to see where the juncture is with the next page. So I can kind of just line up that corner. I can see the corner right there because it's nipped off. And then I'm ready to tape. So I usually keep my tape just to the pattern piece that I'll be cutting out. I don't do the whole page. And then that way I can save a little bit of tape. I'll also just tape pages together that the pattern piece goes onto. Meaning that, you know, like this page right here, I can probably end and not tape anything to this one since there's nothing connecting it. We can just leave that up there and then just keep going. These don't connect here, so I'm just not going to tape them. A lot of the times I'm looking at the pattern piece shape, but um, one thing to note is that I only printed the sizes that I wanted to look at. So I printed only the 16 and the 18. So if you're not using a copy shop, some copy shops will pick the layers that you want printed. Some won't. Mine will. They're very kind with that. Uh, this one I obviously printed out the PDF version. I'm taping it together. And so when I selected my size, I unchecked all the boxes. And when you're in Adobe, there's a layers feature to the left of your viewing pane. And you don't uncheck. Sometimes it's locked, so you can't uncheck it by accident. The titles, which means that you're going to keep all of your pattern piece information, notches, grain lines, um, title, things like that. And then you can uncheck all the other boxes. And you can tell it makes it a lot less cluttered and a little easier to see your pattern piece and make it easier to cut out. It also makes it a lot easier for me when I'm taping it together because you can see the clear definition between the pattern pieces and only what you need to tape. All right, so our last page. All right, 
so we're going to cut these pieces apart. I often will make sure I cut off the bounding box around the pattern pieces like right here. And I think that this is nice because especially on something like the center back or the center front, we often just assume that it's going to be a straight seam. And you can see that this center back has this really nice curve. So you get that shape back there. And it would be really easy if you were sewing at midnight to um, put this line on the fold of your fabric or something. And then you would lose that really nice shaping back there, which I, this, which is honestly what attracted me to making this pattern is that shaping back there. All right, I need to investigate this piece right here. Looks like I don't have all of what I need right here unless this goes to one of the other views. And same with this strap piece here. We have our front, we have our back, we have our back facing, and our front facing. Make sure I have everything I need for these straps because it looks like I'm missing some pattern pieces. All right, so that was just a minor typo that you also need if you are printing out just the top for the B cup. You need pages two through 13. You also need page 16 and 17 just to finish out these straps. It's just barely off of the page there. All right, now we have all of our pattern pieces. So the next thing I'm gonna figure out is how long is this top and do I wanna add any length? I don't usually have garments that are compatible with sh really short tops. Um, and so I might wanna make this a little bit longer so that it goes with some of the items already in my wardrobe. So I'm gonna consult the finished measurements chart here. And you can see there's a schematic right here on um, this page, page four, and it tells you what the length is for each view. And so for the top, the length for the 16 is 18 and a half inches, and that's from the high point of the shoulder, so the highest point there. Um, because it's a strap, there's no shoulder seam, so you're just gonna kinda have to do your best to decide where that high point of shoulder is on you, because it won't be much different than that, and if you're talking like a quarter of an inch, I think that that's pretty much allowable, right? So, all right, so we're gonna figure out what we think of this length here, putting it at the high point of the shoulder, and 18 and a half would put it pretty much right at, just below my waist. And so generally I like things a little bit more like right here. So that would be about five inches longer. So let's, I'm gonna add a little bit to this. I can always make it shorter. I'm gonna get some of that scrap paper that we just cut off. We have our tape here and some scrap pieces of paper. Tape it right to the bottom here. All right, so let's extend the grain line here. We'll extend our grain line. Oops, I moved it a little bit there. And then I'm gonna make this five inches longer. So we're just gonna take the ruler and we're gonna line it up to this cut here for view A, view B. There is a lengthen and shorten line right here, but this is a little different because we're not just adjusting for a long or a short torso and maybe where this waist seam hits. I still want the waist, not seam, but the waist here. I still want the waist to hit there. So I'm going to lengthen it from the bottom because I'm adding such a significant amount. And I'm also going to flare it a little bit because as it gets longer, it's gonna flare out towards my hips. And so I really need to accommodate that. This line, usually if you're lengthening and shortening with the line that's on a pattern, you're keeping the bottom the same and above it the same. You're just adding the amount you want in here and you're not usually not adding you know, much more than one or two inches. If I added my five inches here, what would happen is for my top, it would end up being just too small to hang that long um, when it got to my hip. So I actually need to add a little bit of girth here. All right, so 
All right, so we have our rough line here. Something like that. And then I'm just gonna continue out this line here. I think I'm gonna go for the 16. And I'm also going to make sure I have a right angle going towards this hem, just like that. Because you really want a nice transition when you sew your side seam together. So here's our new line for the back. Do the same to the front. This doesn't affect any other pattern pieces because all the facings are up at the top. So this is all we really need to do if we want to lengthen it. Add my five inches again. Let's make our, extend our grain line here. Actually, we're not gonna extend the grain line. We're, we're gonna extend the grain line, but we're gonna just extend the center line because we really need that anyway. So this is our fold. And now we're going to put our five inches down here. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of carry this side seam out here and we're also going to draw in our cut line for the hem here, just like that. And for this one, we're gonna trim all this off. And we're gonna line up the back to the front to make sure that we're getting the exact same side seam length. So to make this a little easier, I'm gonna trim off this 18 here so I can see it better. And I'm gonna do the same here. The front has a dart, so we're gonna need to pivot that out to make sure we get the correct side seam. So let's see, our seam allowance is 5 8 so you want to make sure that you always line up your seams on the seam line. I know that sounds like such a school marmy home ec teacher thing to say, but I'm going to tell you firsthand, it makes a big difference if you don't do that. All right, so we're going to walk the pattern here up to, on the seam line, I'm putting my finger right here, so here is my back right here. I'll draw the line so you can see it. And then the 5 8 line is about right here, right? You can draw it in if you want. So I'm going to walk the pattern along this seam here. So I'm keeping this edge lined up there, but I'm walking it with my finger down here. I'm going to get up to the dart. I'm going to do a little line. And I'm going to jump down to the bottom of the dart line up the cut line to the other cut line and keep pivoting just like this. Just like this. And now we have the back here for reference, so I'm just going to trim off the front to match. Just like that. We're not making professional patterns here. We're just making our own. I'm going to trim off a lot of this excess. I would never use a rotary knife in professional pattern drafting. <laughs> But for this, this works. We want to get to the sewing part, right? All right, so now we have our actual cut lines. So we also need to make sure we extend our back here, which I forgot to do after I did my green line. So I'm gonna continue the shape of this line right here, just like that. So this is the center back cut line right here See that? So you have this, this is your waist curve right here. All right. All right, so I'm using this vintage polka dot fabric. It's a little wonky. It has been washed, but it is a little bit wonky. I can kind of tell. And um, I think that that's going to be just fine. It's going to be a nice little summer top to wear. So we have our back here, which is not cut on the fold. Lay it out there. And let's see, can we get maybe a strap? behind this is the interfacing and then this strap here I'm not sure that's gonna fit there so I don't really want to get too close to my selvage since the fabrics a little bit wonky so we'll just leave it like that we can always cut this when we open up the fold there let's cut our back out you can follow the instructions in the pattern 
for the cutting layout if you like as well. Let's make sure we get our grain line nice and parallel to the selvage. All right, now we're ready to cut out. I'm going to be doing the size 16. Your notches. It's our center back notch. All right, and so we're going to do one more thing here on this piece. We're going to transfer transfer the side angle right here down here at the bottom if you lengthened it. If you didn't lengthen it, you need to cut it out right there. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to measure how far it is in and how far it is up. and make the same exact amount. I almost missed this because of this little note right here that says notch for inseam pocket views B and C. Do not notch for view A. And I actually thought it meant this little notch here, but it means this notch right here. This isn't part of the pocket. This is part of the hemline. All right, so we've got our hem shape there. We'll cut that off. Got our backs. I think we can get one strap in this piece here. So we're going to trim this off since we're going to offset the fold for the front. Meaning I'm going to move the fold of this fabric over. Straight. Make sure your selvages are parallel and then you'll know that your fold is still on the grain. All right, so we have our fold. Make sure your fold reaches the line all the way on the fabric. Your fabric is nice and straight. You would not want to get it all wonky. All right. We have this similar little shape here on the side seam, so remember to cut that out if you lengthened it. All right, we're going to cut this out. These little painted polka dots are pretty thick vintage fabric. All right, so let's notch our dart, making sure that I got mine completely cut out. Notch your strap placement here. I'm going to do a little nip at the center front so that I know that's the center. It'll help when we're sewing the strap on. And then now we're going to do our dart. I usually need three pins for this. The first one to mark it on the fabric. And the other two to actually mark the fabric. Just poke it straight through, pull them apart, and pin. It's the fastest way. All right, so now let's transfer the little hem shape at the side seam if you lengthened it and you didn't include it when you lengthened it. We can even just lay the back on top of this and transfer it that way because it's the same, but we'll just make sure. All right, that's our front. Now we just have our facings and our strap. So we have room for our strap here and I'm going to lay this piece from the back. The strap looks symmetrical so I don't think you have to make sure that it is uh, right sides together. It won't matter. You'll have two this, the same. Looking at the selvage, keeping it straight. I have a little wrinkle there. All right. All right. I'm gonna get rid of this and we'll do our notches, which look like probably fold lines. And now we have our straps 
And now we just need our facings and interfacing, and we're ready to sew. But for something like these facings, which are both going to be cut on the fold, I'm going to probably offset the fabric just to conserve as much as possible. I don't have a one-way fabric, so I can do this. Put one upside down and one right side up. If you have a one-way fabric, though, be really careful with that if you want your facing to be the same direction as your fabric. All right, so let's get this nice and straight. Put this down here. You're gonna cut one of uh, inner facing and one of your fabric. You could even use contrast if you're kind of low on your regular fabric, especially if you decide to do the bias route. Now we're gonna notch the strap on this piece right here. Make sure you do the right size. And then I'm gonna notch the center so I know where to line it up at the on the fold there. And we'll repeat for this one. All right, and same thing, you wanna do your center and your strap. And now we're gonna cut these out of interfacing off my scrap here and conserve the rest. Okay, so I'm going to use this piece of fabric for my interfacing because I think using something white would really show up through the garment. So maybe it, it looks okay and it doesn't really show up that much, but what it will do is because the facing is here and you have this you know, interfacing behind it and below it is sheer. It's just going to be really obvious and stand out. So I don't really have enough of this, but it's going to be enough. It'll get me almost to my side seam and I'm just going to go for it because it's pretty much all I have. And I think that this is the best choice. And this is just a lining fabric that was from a skirt. It's very lightweight. I actually don't really like using it very much. It just kind of serves its purpose because of um, its lightweight nature and the fact that it doesn't wrinkle and stuff like that. All right, not bad. We're just a little bit shy right there. Our seam allowance is 5 eighths. We're going to catch it. It'll be fine. All right, you ready to sew? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, we're ready to sew our Reynolds top. So the first thing you're gonna do, if you used fusible interfacing, you're going to fuse it to your back facing and your front facing. Now make sure you keep these straight because they're very, very similar. One thing you can do to keep them straight is maybe put a notch right here near the um, center back seam or fold. That way when it's opened up you see a double notch and that usually means that's the back. Double notches mean the back. Um, or maybe you, you know, cut angles on one and you know that that's the front. Whatever it takes because they are very, very similar. And then for your strap, you're also going to fuse that interfacing to one side of the strap piece. And then you're, we're also going to iron the hems we're gonna pre-iron the hems of the shirt. So I'm gonna do that now. I didn't use fusible interfacing and I'll just place mine on there as I go. All right, so for these hems here, we're just gonna pre-fold them and iron them up because I'm just following the, the directions. And first you're gonna do about a quarter of an inch here It's got a really wide hem and I mistook that angle at the side seam for being a shaped vent. But really it's just because that's the angle you need in order to iron up your hem and it still stay flush with the side seams. It's actually a really nice detail. You can see right there on that point if you iron it up and then see now you have it this nice side seam. So it's a quarter and then one and three quarters. Do your best to get a nice even hem here. 
And then if you are using a fabric that's really similar from the front to the back, make sure you make it so that you have a left and a right back. Is one such fabric? It's very hard for me to tell. The little paint on these dots is fighting me a little bit. Right. All right, next we're going to stay stitch our armholes. Now this pattern has 5 8 inch seam allowance, so you're going to stitch your armholes like just inside that and um, you can just keep your same stitch length. This isn't one we're going to use for gathering. I'm going to stitch it at about a half inch in, just like that. And this is going to help us retain the shape of our armhole and also prevent it from getting stretched out or, you know, just losing its shape. Certain fabrics, this is pretty critical, especially something like a linen. All right, so now we have our armholes. And now we're going to sew our straps just so that they're ready for when we're going to add them in. The ink of these dots is really um, pushing my machine around. <laughs> it is a vintage fabric and they don't really make dotted fabric like this anymore. We're going to turn these right side out. If you've never used one of these little loop turners, this is my favorite way to do it. I know there's another um, tool out there, but I never have really good luck using it. Um, you, this has a little like swivel latch here, and this hook is actually pretty sharp. So if it's really delicate fabric, be really careful. But it's nice that for this particular piece, this has raw edges here, so it's going to get enclosed in a seam. So even if you damage this fabric at the end, it's not such a big deal. If it were closed off at the end, you know, and the, the strap was kind of finished and then it was like a button, buttonhole closure, then you'd have to be really careful with turning it. You can also use a safety pin. You don't need a fancy tool. Um, this is really great for really narrow stuff like a spaghetti strap or something similar like that. All right, and so now we're going to press these. And I like to make sure, since I didn't use any fusible, I'm going to make sure that my piece in there isn't folded up or crumpled. Sometimes you can use a chopstick, pencil, something like that. All right, let's iron these. If you have trouble getting a nice crisp edge here, you can kind of gently iron just the seam right here. I'm just pressing the seam allowance one direction, just like this. Try not to get a crisp fold where you don't want it. And now put that seam on the edge. And you'll get a much crisper fold right there. Just like that. All right, next we're going to do the darts on the front. We're going to set the straps aside. I'm going to transfer my dart marking to the out or to the inside. And we're going to line up our dart legs. And I don't backstitch at the end of the dart because well, there's a lot of reasons not to do that. Um, it's very, very rare. It's usually only on a prototype or a muslin. 
or toile, whatever you call it, that I'll just kind of be sloppy and cavalier and backstitch at the end of the dart. Um, if I were doing something a little bit heavy duty or something where the tip isn't going to be the vanishing point somewhere kind of like a bust or somewhere really visible, I will pivot at the end and turn right back into the dart and put my back stitch, but kind of into the seam allowance of the dart. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the end, leave a long tail, I'm gonna hand tie it. Just like this. Make sure you leave your thread take up lever to the top. This is a really good habit to get into, especially if you're a beginner sewer because um, we all hate it when we get, start sewing, we get everything into position. Our hands are doing a circus act trying to keep, every, keep everything together and then you go to sew and the needle comes unthreaded. And that's just because that thread take up lever hasn't been left at the top. All right, so So I do backstitch at the leg of the dart there on, in the side seam. And that's mainly because we're gonna press it down and then we're going to include it in the side seam. And because we want it to be really smooth there, we will, you know, theoretically be kind of pulling on the dart here at the leg to make sure that it's nice and, you know, flat. And because we're going to be pulling on it, you wouldn't want to accidentally start pulling it apart there if you don't backstitch. You'll see that I don't backstitch a lot, um, but for, for something like this, I definitely do. All right, so I'm just going to hand tie the vanishing point of the dart. And the reason I do this is it decreases the bulk sitting there. It also makes it so that if you wanted to make an adjustment to your dart later on, you're not unpicking and seam ripping right there at that very sensitive focal point of your bust and then tiring out the fabric, maybe getting a hole, maybe slipping. You just never know what can happen there. And trust me, it happens enough that it's just best to be kind of gentle with that little area. Plus, like I said, if you have a back stitch right there, and I know a lot of people do that, but the problem is that the back stitch there is it, it kind of sometimes leaves a lump of thread and that can be kind of unsightly on the outside. All right, so you're gonna iron your dart pressing down, kind of get that nice, you know, vanishing point there and line it up with the side seam there. All right, so our next step is we're gonna do the center back seam. And I'm gonna do what the instructions suggest and make a flat felled seam, which is a little different than a French seam. And you see me do French seams a lot. I really love them. If you don't have a serger, um, even if you do, I highly recommend French seams and flat felled seams are really nifty in finishing your edges. And there's just something about how the garment feels with French seams or flat felled seams that makes it feel very, um, sturdy, secure, smooth, lightweight. It's just less bulky than overlocking. So, all right, we're, so we're gonna sew this center back seam. You're gonna unfold the hem down here and sew it at your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Line up the edges. The trick with flat felled seams is you need enough seam allowance to be able to do it. You can probably get away with a French seam with a smaller seam allowance, like maybe half inch. Um, that is a little tricky, it's a little tight. You, you at least want like five eighths usually, unless you're doing some really fine fabric. Um, but with flat fell, because the seam allowances are trimmed differently, and one is hemming over the other one, you kind of need a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna trim one of these seam allowances down to a quarter of an inch. All right, so make sure that you're not in danger of cutting your bodice or the other seam allowance. It doesn't matter which one, just pick one and just trim it down. Try and be kind of even too. It'll just make the process a lot easier. I think a rotary knife is really helpful here because it helps you be directly on top and you're not angling the fabric like I am with the scissors right now. It kind of is a little more accurate, but if you're not a fan of rotary knives, the scissors are great, obviously, right? All right, so now we have this extra seam allowance 
And what we're going to do is basically you're just kind of hemming it over. So you're going to fold it along that cut edge and then fold it down and you're going to stitch it down. So the difference between a flat felt and a French seam also is that it's visible to the outside, but it also is flat against the, the garment. This is why you see it in the inseam of jeans and, and high stress areas where there's a lot of bulk and it might be sensitive like on your inner thigh, you don't really want this really wide seam allowance kind of flapping around there um, when your legs are gonna rub against each other. So the flat fell seam is just really nice and secure and, and low profile. So I'm gonna iron this first. So first off, let's just iron that center back seam a little bit. Make sure you don't have any wrinkles in it. And now let's iron it over that cut edge, just like this. And just make sure the cut edge, the raw edge of the wider seam allowance doesn't go past your stitch line. If it does, it might look a little bulky in a certain areas where you when you go to stitch it down, because it's going it's extending past the seam. We might lose a little bit of our hem folds down here, and honestly, that's okay because it's it's best to kind of go back and make sure that you were straight and you know connecting these two. So, so now I'm gonna iron it one more time and be nice and thorough. Pull apart the bodice, you know, make sure that you're getting a nice flat and we're going to double check on the right side. You don't want to create a bubble. Just double check this spot right here. All right, and so yeah, make sure that you didn't create a little, you know, little bubble. You want to make sure that the seam is pulled apart there, you know, pulled nice and flat. All right, now we're ready to stitch that down. All right, so now we have our ironed seam. So it's basically hemming over that little edge there. So we have our first seam here. We've trimmed one seam allowance and then we've folded it over it and we're gonna stitch it down. So it's gonna be flat to the garment. I'll do the side seams as a French seam so you can kind of see the difference. So make sure that um, if your bobbin thread doesn't match that you switch it out now or you know this is, does show to the outside. You don't need to backstitch. She really doesn't like these little dots. I've actually never had any issues with stuff like this. But I've also never sewn very vintage, hand, not hand painted, but the, the, the paint is very prominent. It is a washed fabric, but you can see also the dots are Maybe you can't, but they're flaking. They're flaking when I'm sewing through it, so. <laughs> All right, so now we have our center back seam and it's nice and flat to the body, which is really great because this top has such a nice little fit there at the low, the small of the back that making it nice and flat like this, I think is gonna be really flattering and accentuate the fit there. All right, so now we're gonna do our side seams and I'm gonna do a French seam on these just so you can see the difference. So for a French seam, you are gonna sew it wrong sides together first. And you're gonna sew it with this 5 8 inch seam, allow seam allowance. I like to do it at a quarter of an inch first. I kind of get it in my machine, I get it started. This is why I don't, I, this is kind of helps me not be able to use pins because I'm using the machine as a, like a helping hand right now. So get this all lined up and your dart may want to wing out past the side seam. Kind of check it and make sure that it, it, it might be better if it laid flat and was flush. Like this is okay a little bit, but when it wants to do a lot like this, Really check it and make sure because you might get a little bit of torquing in your dart or a little buckling and then it might make your garment pull a little weird there. So just make sure that's all nice and flat. So your quarter inch seam allowance.
pivot at your hem shapes. And we're going to do the other side now. Same thing, wrong sides together. Okay, we're back up at that dart. So just look at it here. You know, can it lay nice and flush? All right, now we're going to press, the, you can press the seam open or to one side, and it doesn't matter which way you do it or which direction. So what I do is I usually kind of put the garment staggered so that there's a side seam and there's a side seam so that they're not one on top of the other. And then that way I can iron one without affecting the other and then I can flip it over and iron the other one. So I'm just going to kind of pull the garment, make sure it's nice and flat and push the seam allowance one direction. We might lose a little, a little bit of our hem fold, but that's okay. I think ironing the hem later on is a better plan. All right, so same thing. Don't worry, you won't have a, you won't have a pucker there. Once that is hemmed, it'll all lay nice and flat. All right, and so now turn it right side out or the the other way turn it the other way inside out it looks right side out but it's not and now you're going to press it along the seam flat so now this is the back this is the front that's the side seam and the seam here on the side is very nice and crisp and it wants to fold right on that stitch line which is great and that's because we did that first step of ironing do the same thing on the side Now, if your fabric is really thready and unraveling a lot, um, you may need to trim that edge. And you definitely want to do that before our next step. So definitely check it over because you don't want the threads to show on the right side. And they will. <laughs> no getting around that. So let's check mine over here. Also, if you didn't sew at a very even seam allowance, you might want to. And I have a little bit of thread, so we'll trim that. I couldn't quite see them, but I can see that I can trim them, and obviously I want to trim that a little bit. I find it honestly easier to trim these threads when my garment is turned so that the seams that we you know, sewed first are still in that position. So once you finish sewing the seam the first pass we just did, now that's the kind of the best time to trim this. And I like using a rotary knife because it, it's a little bit easier to be straight up and down and not change anything. And also not, you know, grab your garment and, you know, cut it. But there's obviously there's risks using your rotary knife as well. So yeah, you want to definitely trim these threads. I'm going to put it this way so I can see that little fold I created. And make this nice and even if you can. And then once you trim it, then do your ironing if you haven't done it yet. You definitely need this to be smaller than the last seam allowance we're going to sew, which is 3 8 All right, with right sides together, along that iron side seam, we're going to sew our last pass of the side seam. And you're gonna sew it at 3 eighths of an inch, since we already used a quarter. And it'll enclose that raw edge. Now make sure your garment is pretty flat and perpendicular. You don't want your side seam you know, this side to kind of drop below or um, it'll torque. And you'll see those kind of torque lines across your seam allowance. And some fabrics that happens really easily. 
you're still lining up the garment, the front and the back on the seam line. So don't get lazy with this. This is, I would be totally something I would do. <laughs> All right, so sew that. One more. These dots are really pushing my presser foot around. All right, so now is the time that you're going to pin your straps to the garment on the seam line and you're gonna check the length. And what I recommend is pin your straps to the back at the notches there line it up to the notch on either side, pin it to the back. That way, when you try it on, you can pull the straps to the front and make sure you line up on the seam line of the top to your strap. And what you can do is, you know, pin your strap so that you know for sure you're on that seam line, you know, so we have this one. And then when you're trying it on, do this, you know, like, okay, I need it that much shorter. This is what I do. This is where it's going to get sewn. It's really important that you know, because that five eighths inch of a seam, if you're not accurate with where you're pinning this on the seam line there, your strap, one strap might be like a little longer and always fall off and the other one be too tight or, you know, something like that. So just make sure, even if you chalk it on there or pin it so that you know, so then let's, let's, uh, let's do our strap placement and then we're really close to finishing this. All right, so we have it tried on here and I've got the straps pinned where I want them to finish. So just make sure, like I keep saying, that you mark the seam line so that you have you know, fabric on the bodice and on the strap to match on the seam line. You don't want to get those confused. And, you know, it's a good opportunity to see if it's covering your bra strap if you wear one um, and to check that placement out. So, and you can also see this is the difference between the French seams. They stick out, whereas the flat felled seam is nice and flat. All right, so let's sew it. All right, I'm going to trim my face seam or my straps right now. And I'm also make sure that you don't flip your left and your right because it could be different plus the angle is a little bit different. So if you find your seam line there, 5 eighths inch from the top of the bodice there and mark it on the strap, the little, the little uh, dots are kind of playing around with my <laughs> joggle liner um, and then go 5 eighths past that you need seam allowance on the strap as well. Just like that. And then I'm going to trim this on that cut line now. And I'm also going to put it, you know, right sides together so that I know exactly the angle I was going for on the strap. And then that way now my strap is, you know, pinned to it right sides together. Oops, this is the right side. Whoops, whoops just like this. I, I didn't really have to move anywhere um, in relation to the notches. So I just stayed there way. Okay. Just like that. All right. And now you need to decide if you're going to hem your facing and stitch it down to the bodice or you can overlock it and leave it loose. I recommend stitching it down just like the instructions. It'll be a much nicer finish and feel really secure and uh, just a nice facing in general. It also means probably less ironing in the end. All right, so now we're gonna get our facings out here. Make sure you don't get your front confused from your back at this point. And um, my front has a little V notch at the center fold there. Um, and in the back, I actually put an extra uh, double notch there so that I wouldn't get confused. All right, so I recommend putting your side seams in first. And then we're going to finish the bottom edge of the facing. 
So sew your side seams together here. Line up all your edges. Right sides together. We don't need to French seam this because it's going to be enclosed in the final finishing of this facing. You can if you want, especially if you're not planning on stitching down the facing to the bodice. But I really, that's one of the things that attracted me to this top was the finish and how it's stitched down. A lot of times that cuts down on the amount of ironing you're going to need to do because the facing isn't going to flip out to the outside. And especially if you're a beginner, I think that kind of plagues us is that the facings will kind of flip out to the right side of the garment and it's so annoying. It just makes it look like you didn't sew very well when you may have done a really good job. Um, just sometimes there's forces that work against you. And there's lots of little tricks and stuff um, to, you know, getting a nice finish on a facing. It's a nice simple uh, way to finish something, but they can be a little tricky. They have their own little you know, tips and tricks. All right, so now we have our facing sewn together at the side seams. And now what I recommend you do is either overlock this long edge, press your seams, press your seams out like this, or press them towards the front um, because we're gonna press the side seams to the back. And to reduce the bulk, I recommend pressing the seams towards the front um, or opening them up. And then we're going to finish this whole long edge. Now, you're going to top stitch this down to the garment. So you can turn it up a quarter of an inch if you don't have a serger. You can also zigzag it. Once it's all turned up, it's gonna be a nice clean finish. Now, I know <laughs> that this long edge, turning that up and stitching it down, that's a little tricky. So some of the things you can do is put a stay stitch at a quarter of an inch in from that edge and it'll want to fold there a lot easier, especially when you go to iron it. So I'm gonna do that. The, if I were sewing this without you right now, I'd probably go the easy route and I would overlock this edge and call it a day. Uh, I wouldn't turn it under only because sometimes I, I just wanna finish, you know? I think turning it under and stitching it down is a much nicer finish. And I like my garments to look like that in the inside more. They last longer and it just looks nicer. It looks really, it just looks really nicely finished and it just feels really sturdy, it feels really good. And the serger is nice and quick and it is a little bit, I'm not gonna say it's less bulky in this case because um, serger thread can be kind of bulky in itself. It's probably six of one, half dozen of the other, to be honest. So it would just be a faster way to do it and a lot easier. But if you don't have a serger or you want that nicer finish, or maybe you're doing this as a gift, you know, I would do it this way. This is, this is what I would want. <laughs> I also find that sergers, um, the threads, can snag on things. And so there is that, and then you might have that one little loop of sort of serger thread on the inside of your garment, and you're like, gosh darn it, I did such a good job on that. Why is there that one loop? You, you know you can't cut it because then it kind of presents another problem. All right, so now I have this little stay stitch edge. Now, if your fabric is very finicky, you can kind of I would have broken this up maybe into four sections and I would kind of pull on it and, and just kind of draw it up a tiny bit. You're not putting gathers in it, just make it a little easier. I think we're gonna be okay just folding along the seam there and ironing it down and then being able to stitch it. So let's go to the iron and do that. We're just gonna go around this whole edge here. And when you get to these really tight curves, like especially this interior curve, you're gonna to wanna to clip that. And then that way it will want to fold back on itself. And obviously you can trim the edge if you got some uneven bits like I did. Even on these exterior curves, it can kind of lay a little flatter. You can see my, my interfacing is hanging lower here and that's why it looks so wide. So go around. Clip your edge here first, and then we'll iron it up. All 
right, so we have our whole edge clipped there. And now we're going to iron it up and try to put that stay stitch on the inside so we don't see it on the outside. Now you can also use your serger and then iron that up. That's, that's fine. You could even use the differential on your serger, tighten it up a little bit and then overlock that edge and then it might even want to turn a little bit to the inside. It's kind of an interesting idea for an experiment. But that, that is, it does make the hem a little bulky and I wouldn't do it on this really thin see-through fabric. Trying to get a nice smooth curve there. You can also use like a tailor's ham or, you know, um, something like that it might be easier. All right, let's make sure we got all of it. Now, if you end up getting any of the spacing not very consistent, you know, like say you, it's really hard through here and you end up folding more through here and less through here. Uh, what'll happen is when you go to stitch this down, your, the width of your facing is gonna fluctuate. So look, I get it. If it's really hard, it, no one's really gonna notice that. So don't, don't sweat it too much. I just want you to be aware of, if you're just trying to get through the ironing, that that is kind of some of the outcome to be expected is not having a very even facing when you go to stitch it down. All right, so grab the bodice and we're gonna sew around the perimeter of the top edge first. We're gonna sew the facing to the garment and make sure you line up your front to your front and your back to your back. So this one right here is my back. This is my front. And you're gonna center, put that center on the seam of that flat felled seam. Don't center it between the stitches, center it on the seam. All right, and we're going to put a few pins in. Make sure that you're getting your strap lined up there. You don't want it to get wiggly. It will want to get wiggly. I recommend putting in two pins on each strap end so that it doesn't. Line up your side seams. And like I said, you can press the seam allowance open or what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the seam allowance of the bodice towards the back and so I would press the seam allowance of your facing towards the front. Here, I'll show you how we can do that. Oh, I already stitched that down. So I would press it towards the front and that way it reduces the bulk there. My fabric's pretty lightweight, so I'm not too concerned. But I, use a, I sew a lot of linens and that is definitely something that can get bulky. In a case like this where my interfacing is sticking up above my edge, I'm lining up the fabric, not the interfacing. That happens, that's fine though. I mean, the whole, inner, the whole facing is covered in interfacing. That's all that matters. We'll just trim that stuff off. All right, so at this point, all we have left is attaching the facing, which we're about to do, and stitching the facing down to the bodice and the hem, and we're done pretty quick. So at your 5 8 inch seam, keep everything nice and flat. Your, your strap's going to want to do its own thing right now. That's fine. Just don't catch it in this edge here. When you get near your strap here, uh, you need to get that nice and tight when you pivot and turn. So 
So when you get to the top edge here, make sure you run your needle right along the strap. Uh, I just kind of almost didn't pivot in time. Because you want to get right up against the strap, and you'll have a nice transition of your armhole with the, in line with the strap. So just stay at that 5 8 inch seam. This is something that I'm, before I'm done, I'm going to go and double check that I stitched right up along those straps. So you're gonna line up all those notches with your strap and then make sure that you're not catching the strap along the part that's not the raw edge. You know, you want the, you want, you're catching only the raw edge right now, not the strap itself, not the finished sides. So I'm just kind of repositioning my strap a little bit, making sure I'm getting right up against the seam line there. So I don't want to catch the strap as I'm approaching this edge right here, and I want to pivot right alongside. And sometimes, you know, I'll do this, I'll kind of feel that ridge right there. Make sure and then right when I get to the 5 8 inch seam line, I pivot, make sure my strap's still lined up to the raw edges, and turn. Make sure I have this lined up perfectly to the that edge to that seam. Just make any micro adjustments you need so that when I come to the end of the, where the strap is, here's the strap, I pivot right there alongside of it. Keep your bodice nice and flat lined up. You can see I kind of I don't just start sewing when it's buckling like this. I kind of smooth it out like this, get the facing flat, and then stay on that curve. All right, we're back at the beginning. So let's check our strap before we trim or clip anything. Because see, look, we want that armhole to line up with the strap right there. I feel like the first one I did wasn't that great. So let's check that one. It's okay. We could probably get that one a little better. And maybe this one a little better too. Let's see. Let's make sure I have the proper seam allowances. Yeah, this one's a little bit off, so I'm going to reposition this one here and make sure I get it right up against that armhole seam line. It'll just look really nice. And this is the kind of thing that as a home sewer, you start noticing because it's these little kind of subtle sewing details that make your sewing look really good. Even if other things are kind of amiss, this kind of detail shows that you really were doing your best, you know, even if something else went wrong. Let's see if I'm gonna slide that just a tiny bit over. Now, if you found that this strap needed to go in towards your center a little bit, what I would do, as long as it's okay with how you like the way it fits, is I would smooth that armhole. You know, I would bring it to match. So if your strap has to go, you know, line up right here, you have like five eighths of an inch right here to the, of a gap. And if you don't want that little like tag on the ends, on the outsides of your straps, what I would do is I would just blend it in, you know, with your armhole and cut that amount off like that. And then you have your new seam allowance to go right there because this would be your new seam allowance. All right, so I'm gonna do some micro adjustments on my strap here. And ignore all those chalk markings I just put. <laughs> I 
feel where that edge is and pivot. There we go. Ooh, those dots make me so very crooked. They're so stout. All right, and let's see. Well, this is the other one I wanted to check. This one's so subtle that instead of taking it out, I'm just going to double check my seam allowance on the armhole instead and just get it a little better, a little tighter. All right, so let's clip this whole armhole edge here. So you're going to clip this whole armhole. You grade the seam allowances, which means you can, um, if you're using like a thicker fabric, you might want to make one of these layers, you know, trim it and then trim the next one a little bit more. And so that there's, it's kind of stepped. Um, that way you can reduce the bulk. I do like trimming mine down. Just try and do it very evenly. Uh, remember some fabrics, this is really, that ridge of your seam allowance is gonna show through as a ridge through your, through your bodice on the right side. Clip your corners there. We still need to clip into the armhole curve. Again, this would be a lot easier on your table with a rotary knife, not sitting at the sewing machine. Just the curve, just the armholes. Ignore your stay stitching. All right, now let's turn it to the right side and press and make sure everything looks good. You can tug on your strap, make sure. So with this little edge right here, I like to do what I always do when I, with a French seam. I like to just press that one way or the other, it doesn't matter. Just kind of press it. And then that way when you go to press it right on this edge, it's just so easy and it looks so good. You can do that all the way around, honestly. It doesn't matter that it's a curve. Just, you know, just go around like this and press the seam allowance one way or the other, it doesn't matter. Just press it. There's something about this that just makes it want to press one way on the edge there, a lot cleaner. So I'm just inside there, pressing that seam we just clipped and sewed. Just a little press. You might cause some wrinkles, but we'll, we'll get those out later. I'm not doing a final iron quite yet. All right, now, when we put it to the inside, even though it looks like it's pressed one way or the other, it just wants to lay on that seam. And if you have an ironing board, it might be even easier because you don't have to have it flat like I do. If you don't, you can just do it from the inside of the garment like I do, it makes it a lot easier. Getting this nice and flat. We don't want to get rid of that curved edge that we so we already ironed and clipped. But you do want to make sure you do this part because it makes it so that you don't get a bubble in the facing once we attach it to the garment. And you can even be pinning it down right now too. So now is your chance. You can 
pin this. And when you're ironing this, make sure the seam is more pulled towards the inside of the garment. You'd much rather see the seam on the inside of the garment than on the outside. So you just kind of kind of over rotate it a little bit to the inside. Then it'll be nice and clean clean on the outside. Do your best to line up this seam right here to the side seam. If it lays flat and it's not lined up, that's okay. No one's going to see that and you're better off not over correcting it because then it'll pull weird on the outside. So just get it to lay flat. That's fine. No one's going to see the inside. And even if they do, it doesn't look bad, even if the seam doesn't line up. All right, so it's looking pretty nice. Look at that, looks pretty good. So now we're going to do our top stitch of the facing down. And I fully recommend that you start somewhere like in the armhole, you know, like right here at the seam here. Don't start at the center back, just start at the side seam there because it's far less visible than the center back, so. All right, and make sure, remember, your bobbin's going to show, so make sure your bobbin's looking good. It's pretty hard to do this from the right side, but you can if you need to. I'm not even going to back stitch it first. And so keep your garment nice and flat as you get to these spots. You see how this curve right here, get this little section here nice and flat. You don't have to take your pins out until you're all the way done if you don't want. And then I'm also making sure that my underarm seam is more biased to the inside of the garment so that it's not over rotating to the outside. I'd much rather it over rotate to the inside. We don't want any torquing and we also want this armhole to line up with our strap really nicely. And in something like this with these gentle curves, I find it just be really careful that when you stop and start, I do that a lot, especially because I'm not using pins. When you stop and start, that you don't get a funny little like jog, you know, an angle. If there's a little uh, point in your facing, you know, like right along this curve, that's okay. Try and keep your stitching nice and smooth and no one will ever know that it's there. Just go right past it and keep a nice smooth curve. You can see I don't have a free arm on my machine, which means that my machine, if it were above the table, I could put the whole garment around the bed of the machine. I don't have that option. So when you don't have that option, I sew from the inside of the garment with the garment above the bed of the machine. It makes it a lot easier to make sure you don't accidentally catch the garment underneath um, you know, the other side of the garment, and it's also just flatter and it lays a lot nicer. So these, these little dots, they're, they're like pushing my machine around a little bit, and they also crumble sometimes and flake. You just never know what's going to be a struggle. <laughs> but I, I am pretty much... Uh, I swoon for fabrics like this. <laughs> All right, we're back at the beginning. I'm gonna get my ta thread tail out of the way from there and then back stitch, trim my tail. I'm not gonna look at it yet. I'm gonna get rid of all my pins first. <laughs> it's okay if some of your stay stitching shows on this side. It won't on the other side and that's what's important. All right, we got all our pins and let me clip my the reds over here. Oh yeah, there's so many flaky 
polka dots in this stitching. Doesn't look so bad to you probably, but see, look at that right there. Okay, let's see how it looks. Very cute. It needs a good press through here, but that looks very nice. So let's just hem it up. Make sure our ironing is still roughly able, able to see it and um, press your seam to the back. I'm gonna start my hem stitching on the side seam, just kind of like I did on the uh, facing at the side seam. Same thing, I'm gonna start on the inside of the garment. If you need to freshen up the ironing, go for it. It's a pretty wide hem and it's really easy to get it a little bit wiggly. Remember, my top is much longer than the one in the pattern. Another thing to think about is like when you get to your center back seam, you want this seam to be right on top of the, the seam when it folds up there. That is your non-negotiable point. So you know that when you get there, all of this must be eased in. If not, what happens is you start pulling it little by little and you'll get these drag lines, these torque right in your hem. It's a pretty wide hem. One thing you could do is put a piece of interfacing in this wide of a hem and that will help make it so that it wants to behave and it won't be, need as much hemming. And same with the side seam, you really need that side seam to line up with the seam there. So what I can do here is I can put this pin in here, lining up the seam, and now it kind of frees me up to kind of look at what I got going on here. I have this little bit of gapping here. And so, you know, how am I gonna combat that? I think I can fold this up a tiny bit more, a little past where I folded it, correcting for whatever ironing I did. And now I'm gonna kind of, I'm holding this pretty firm, like my fingers are kind of dragging along the fabric like this, straightening it out. I'm also gonna pull along this folded edge here to prevent any to torquing. Remember, as you get better and better as a sewist, I feel like a lot of what you're doing that makes your garment look better is handling the fabric. You just kind of start getting the hang of what the fabric it wants to do and how it reacts and what to do to combat anything that you don't want it to do. So same thing. So let's get this. I do this pretty unnatural or pretty naturally now. So, okay, so I'm gonna fold this. I'm gonna line up my seam right on top. We'll pin it so that we know that's non-negotiable, right? And so now what do we have to deal with here? So this wants to fold up a little bit higher. Let's bring you down really low since the fabric's kind of dark. So you can see there's my iron line right there and it's, you know, over rotating a little bit, right? Here's my side seam right here. So this is all pinned and lined up. I'm at the side seam there. So this is the center back seam and this is the side seam right here. So let's see here, let's look at it. We want a nice smooth line, whatever ends up happening. So we want this nice and flat, no torque lines. Maybe, you know, let's see if we can get that a little softer. And I'm kind of pulling, you know, I'm pushing my whole flat hand on the hem and my whole flat ham, hand on the hem here, kind of smoothing it out. Now I'm gonna tuck this in a little bit more because it'll look a little more even. The dots really fight me on this because it's like, it's like trying to slide rubber. I'm just trying to get it to relax a little bit through here. So this is why I, I, I kind of like ironing it closer towards the end, right before you're gonna do it. Cause then you would see all these little idiosyncrasies and things that are gonna fight you during this step. But it is really nice having it pre-ironed because it's kind of like, ooh, I got here and now all I have to do is stitch it, you know? It's like a little gift. All right, so. We have this whole expanse of the front, which 
actually might be much easier because we don't have um, any seams to kind of grab onto as far as non-negotiable points. But let's make sure, like, this is laying really nice right here. Let's just pin that. Let's make, let's just call that a non-negotiable spot so that we don't have any issues creep up. Because remember, your presser foot, it's not coming towards you. It's just kind of an optical illusion that it's coming towards you, right? And the feed dogs are pulling away from you and the presser foot's this way. So it's making your fabrics, you know, do this. The top layer wants to push this way. The bottom layer is being pulled that way. So you already have that kind of um, physics happening that you're working with, hopefully, and not against. But it does feel like sometimes it's working against you. And my fabric is so fine, like so lightweight, that the, you know, ironing at first really said, oh, okay, that's what I'm going to do forever and ever. And, you know, maybe I don't want to do that forever and ever. And right now I'm trying to correct it a little bit. All right, there we go. And so you might, you know, might look a little messy on the inside. You can see my dots flaking there. Let's see how it looks on the right side. So we could just use a little bit of a press here and we're done. Forgot my label. Oh, well. There we go. That looks really cute. I love this little polka dot fabric. Really simple little top. I love the way this is cut around the bodice here. It's just simple, but it just works really good. And I think a dress version is going to be fantastic. All right, well, thanks for sewing with me. And if you ever want to sew with me live, please do. It's really fun. And you can check out all my how-to videos. They're my most popular videos by a lot in the how-to playlist. And happy sewing. Leave a like and comment and subscribe if you really like what you see. Um, and check me out sometime. Bye.